I was introduced to Psalm 139 and um, verses 13 to 16 talk about how you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's how I've, in the ups and downs of life, that's, that's how I, what I've tried to remind myself that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and there's a purpose for my life. And from that day to this day, I still believe that. Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm one of nine children. I'm number seven out of the nine. Grew up in the core area. Um, I was, we're considered core area kids. Um, yeah, I grew up just off of Logan Avenue. My dad was indigenous and my mom was a British war bride. And so um, we grew up in a, a very, um, different home than most of the people around us because uh, most of the people around us were indigenous and my mom uh, ran our home very differently. I was uh, 17. I had thought I had messed my life up. I had been a very studious kid and, um, and I was in a relationship that I thought was um, the real deal and it wasn't. And so I found myself pregnant but thought my life was totally messed up forever. And I was seven months pregnant when my sister and her family came back from um, Ontario. My brother-in-law had been working there and they had all encountered Jesus. And they led almost all of us that were living in Winnipeg at the time to the Lord. And in fact, um, very early on in that, um, that Jesus encounter, I was introduced to Psalm 139. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh goodness, meeting Carson. He was in and out of my life from the time I was a kid. So it wasn't this big moment. He was my friend and he was a good friend. And he was, he was one of the few people I knew in life that loved people unconditionally. That we ended up getting married and our life was beautiful. Um, okay, 2011. Um, so at the beginning of that year, um, we were in Mexico and Carson found a, a lump on the side of his head. He got a call from our family doctor saying that the pathology had come back from um, the lump. They told us it was cancer. They just didn't know exactly what kind and what stage and whatnot. In September, end of September, we were told that it was follicular lymphoma and that it was treatable. And so he was preparing to um, start chemotherapy. On November 1st, 2011, Nicole had been to um, a, a doctor. She had a, uh, a lump on her breast and they told her that uh, she had breast cancer. At the beginning of 2012, Carson was still going through treatments. He was going through treatments every three weeks. And Nicole started chemotherapy at the end of um, February. And then um, in the fall, they were both, Nicole was, was um, given a clean bill of health, and although she still had genetic testing to go through. But um, as far as her cancer diagnosis was concerned, she was given a clean bill of health and Carson was told he was in remission. Carson got sick in the fall of 2013 and we thought he had pneumonia and we went to emerge and um, he just felt this heaviness in his chest. He was have, having trouble breathing over the course of a week and a half. He was diagnosed with lymph, um, lymphoblastic lymphoma. You know, he was, he was truly amazing. He was amazing, but he became truly amazing. When he was diagnosed a second time, he just said, we just got to keep our tanks full, our spiritual tank full. And, and every time he got a report from the doctor, he'd say, this is what the doctors say, but this is what God says. And this is what God's word says. This is what we're praying. He was the one going through treatment, yet he was the one encouraging us. We didn't get the big miracle. We didn't. On November 23rd, 2014, Carson passed away after being, you know, going through all of the things. But there were miracles in the journey. 
God used Carson to bless his family, encourage us, strengthen our walk. And in the end, it was, um, it was hard to let him go, but we had no control over that. I don't know if, you know, how other people grieve, but I couldn't pray. I couldn't, I just, all I could do was cry and um, I could read scripture, but it didn't, didn't stick with me. So music became my prayer. Shortly after Carson passed away, I had heard the song, um, The Hurt of the Healer. It says, um, breathe, it's all that I can do. I have pain so deep that I can hardly breathe. And that's exactly, like, I couldn't believe this song had those words in it, because that's what it was. I had pain so deep I could hardly breathe. But it goes, it goes on to say, but I know you're with me. And I would, I played that song every day because the, the, the hurt was so deep that I didn't, I couldn't breathe. I, I knew God was there, but he was, he felt far away. And I was very sad, but I also knew that Psalm 139 is still true, that God has a plan. There's still a purpose. There was a purpose when I was 17 and pregnant. And there's a purpose when I'm much older than 17. I didn't always believe that, but I, that's where I've landed. Through everything, I've always landed at the same spot. There is comfort, there is purpose, there is strength. There is hope in Jesus. You can't find it anywhere else. I think we've all seen people in the world try to, you know, address their hurt and their wounds different ways. It's always Jesus. It's always Jesus.